Well, good morning. It's March 2nd. It's the first Monday in March. And what I'm going to say is, where in the world has this year gone? I mean, we're we're down. Two months are done. We got 10 months left. I, I'm, I'm still thinking New Year's Eve celebration. Folks, let's get into it. Obviously, coronavirus, coronavirus, and coronavirus. Uh, we've had some really good data last week. We had some really exceptional housing data last week. New home sales, existing home sales. But I'm going to tell you right now, the markets were being driven by coronavirus, and it doesn't look like anything has changed. Now, some some interesting things to talk about. First of all, there's there, the catalyst for, for the selling pressure for the downbeat economic was caused by Organization of Economic Corporation and Development. They are saying things are not getting better at all. And the, the, the silver lining is Fed chairman said on Friday that central banks stood ready to help the economy if needed. What that's telling us is, hey guys, if we see more downside, we're going to cut rates. I'm anticipating two rate cuts this year. Uh, not this year. I'm, I'm anticipating two rate cuts in the next two quarters. Not sure what's going to happen further on because I think it's going to take two quarters for the economy to recover from this. But I honestly do believe that we're going to see uh, stimulus. We're definitely going to see stimulus. It's just a matter of time. I think we're going to see stimulus from Bank of Japan, um, the ECB. I think we're going to see stimulus from the USA. I think the, glo the world is going to get together to help push the market out of this coronavirus. And I also think based on what the Fed said, that we might have hit the bottom or are near the bottom. If you look at the S&P 500, this is Friday's data. This is intraday data. This is um, this is this is a five day chart. This is a uh, 30 minute bars. Each of these bars is 30. Notice what happened Friday afternoon right after the Fed spoke. The market began rallying a little bit higher. Now, if you look at the economic reports this week, we got jobless claims, we got employment situation. But again, I'm not focused too much on the employment and the jobless claims because I think, again, the biggest factor driving this market is consumer sentiment. And that's being caused by this virus because we got we had really good numbers last week. But again, no one ever even thought about using that to stop the bleeding. It just wouldn't work. The bleeding was just too hard. But again, we could potentially see some upside. I wouldn't get too bullish at this point, but there may be light at the end of the tunnel. Now, if you look at the put, the, if you look at the VIX, the volatility index, this is the fear index, and this is the monthly data. This is going back to 2000. So this is going back 20 years. Notice we are right now in the third highest, almost the second highest level we've been in 20 years. So markets are really, really spooked. If you look at the NASDAQ 100, we are literally hitting the 200 day moving average. If you look at the SPY, we're substantially below the 200 day moving average. But if you look at the NASDAQ 100, we are right now up right at this level. Now, in terms of the SPY, we are hitting, and the reason I wanted to show this to you, if you look at the red line, this is this right here was medium term support. This is substantial support, not long term support. Long term support is further down. But this is a good medium term support level right around the 281 level, 282 level. There's a good chance we may dip down there and start coming up, especially in light of the fact that the NASDAQ 100 is hitting the 200 day moving average. We've bounced off the 200 day moving average many, many times. Another factor that's driving my thought process is the fact that the put to call ratio, even though if you look here, the market went down. Look at what it did the last two days of last week. We went down from 220, from 220 to 190. We literally dropped like a rock. The, uh, the S&P 500 dropped 11%. But look at the put to call ratio. We haven't been able to go above 127. And that's telling us we may be turning the corner. That's sentiment indicator. And that's telling us we may be turning the corner. Another major factor, gold. Gold has not rallied. Gold has been coming down. Now, interestingly, bonds have been rallying, but gold has not. And gold is a major influence. It's a major flight quality asset. When you see a downturn in the stock market, a lot of people turn to interest rates and to the gold market. And gold has been coming down. It hasn't been going up. So that's telling me we may be very, very, very close to a downside. 
Um, also, let me show you to put the, the, um, the RSI levels. They are just crazy, crazy down right now. Now, remember, I was showing you this on the way up. I was showing you these levels on the way up. Remember, all of these blue, every time you see the, the, the blue lines come up here, that means we're overbought, grossly, grossly overbought. And look at this, November overbought, December overbought, most of January overbought. The, the the fact that this happened should not be surprising. The fact that coronavirus was the catalyst, it's one thing, but I think a lot of this had to do with the coil unwinding. And folks, we are down. We are now oversold. We're deeply, deeply oversold. As a matter of fact, I think whether we go up or not, I think we're due for a nice big bounce. And I think we're going to see it before the end of this week. Now, before I, I send you off to do your thing, I want you to be very careful. I want you to just dip your toe in the water. This is not a time to go in. This is not a time to be a hero. This is not a time to be an investor. If you want to do that, you want to wait for the market to trade above the 50-day moving average, and that's at the 304 level. We're right now at the 284-ish level. So before I conclude, let me give you the top, top stocks. PCG, very, very strong, bucking the trend. NVIDIA, bucking the trend. Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, buff, bucking the trend. Tiffany, can't really look at Tiffany because it's a can't, it's a takeover candidate right now. So I would just leave Tiffany alone. But Lamb Research, BIIB, Netflix, um, Albemarle, Advanced Micro, all of these stocks. And I would look at these stocks here, Autodesk. They are bucking the trend, which means they're gonna be the most resilient during this downturn and they're going to give us the most upside when the market turns. I really like NVIDIA, BIIB, and AMD. Why? Because they actually have the most exposure to China. And the fact that they're holding on tells us a lot, tells us a, a, a really, really strong picture. These are chip stocks. These are, chi uh, are semiconductor software companies, chip manufacturers. These are stocks that have a huge, huge, huge contamination to China and the East. So it's very important to see that they are actually holding up pretty pretty well. Again, I would only stick to the top 10, PCG, NVIDIA, REGN, uh, Avoid Tiffany, MSCI. I'm not, I'm not really familiar with that company, but I am very familiar with all LRCX, BIIB, Netflix, and AMD and Autodesk. And these companies, especially NVIDIA, Netflix, not Net Netflix, excuse me, NVIDIA, uh, LRCX, BIIB, AMD and Autodesk, they have a very strong correlation to China. So keep your eye on those stocks. And if I was going to start buying stocks, I would start buying the strongest stocks, not the weakest stocks. On the other side of the, of the ocean, if you will, let's look at the weakest stocks, stocks that have the most cross-contamination and the most vulnerability. There will be no surprise, most of them are travel-related stocks. A lot of transport stocks, a lot of uh, Norwegian Cruise Line, uh, United Airlines, American Airlines, you see where I'm going with this? Royal Caribbeans, these are stocks that you wanna watch. Now, F Carnival, if you're a long-term investor, okay, if you're a very long-term investor and you're gonna be holding stocks for the next five, 10 years, these may be good long-term investment opportunities. But if you're a trader, you don't wanna look at these stocks. You wanna look for these, you wanna look for a little upside and then you wanna sell these stocks. But as far as going long, you wanna go long the strongest stocks, not the weakest stocks. So again, NVIDIA, LRCX, BIIB. I like this one, I like the BIIB because it's a pharmaceutical company and it's actually been holding up really, really well in light of everything that's, that's that we're seeing right now. Netflix is great, doesn't have a lot of exposure to China. A Advanced Micro Devices does have a lot of exposure to China and so does Autodesk. But again, and Corvo, watch this stock. Corvo uh, supplies chips to Apple. And I like the fact that these stocks, if you look at the, the one month return, most of these stocks, look at this, uh, NVIDIA, still up 12.44%. REGN, still up 30.98% over the last 30 days. These stocks have some momentum. So again, just to summarize, I think this week we're going to see uh, some turning point. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that because the put to call ratio is not budging above 127 which is very important. Also, the Fed took a position last week. And although they didn't say we're guaranteed to do something, that's not how they operate. They give us clues and they tell us we're going to take action if something happens. And I think if markets break down 
through the long-term support level, which is right now, or medium-term, medium, not long-term, medium-term support level at 284, I think they're going to take action. But I want to show you something else. If you look at the stock market over five years or over 20 years, if you look at the long-term, this is a monthly chart, the structure has not been impacted. We are still in a very strong uptrend. And after we get past this coronavirus, which we will, the market is going to turn back higher like there's no tomorrow. Again, if I was a buyer right now, I would be buying at the 50-day moving average. I would wait for two days above the 50-day two, two, moving average. I wouldn't want to look at the, let me just give you the the, the, the buy price levels because we're looking at the, two, at the at the 200-day and I'm confusing it with the 50-day. The 50-day is right here. It's at the 326 level, not the 302 level. The the 200 day moving average is at 302 level. So if we, let me just add it right here. Let me add it, um, let me add another moving average here. So you could see the two and you could see where they're at. Here we go. Let me change the color of this one here. See, we're getting very frisky here with the colors and everything. I'll make this one red. All right. So this is the 200-day moving average. We're below the 200-day moving average. The, the long-term support is right at the 284, 280-ish level, right around here, right where we're at here. I would definitely wait to get above the 200-day moving average. And again, if you want to be really safe, don't get long or really long. Don't increase your position. Don't gamble with this market until we're above the 50-day the moving average, which is at the 326 level. So again, the 200-day moving average is at the 304 level. Long-term support is right around 284 level. And we close at 285. So if we go a little bit lower, let me show you this from a perspective here. Right here, right there, 281, 282-ish, right here, very close to where we're at right now. We need to hold this level right here. If we don't hold this level, we're going to go down to the 272 level. And that will probably hold. That's the long-term support level right here, 272. So let me summarize. Long-term support, 270, 271-ish. Medium-term support, 281, 283, a little below where we're at right now. Uh, time to dip your toe into the water right around the 304 level. And safety zone is at 326, 327 level. And again, I think we're going to see a turnaround this week. Fed data is going to come, but I'm not too focused on it. I'm more focused on what the Fed says and what the market does. The Fed data is not a big driving force right now, not based on the fear level we're seeing with volatility showing the highest level in the last, the third highest level so far in the last 20 years. Hope that helps, and I hope this helps you um, put this panic on the back burner and start focusing on these resistance and support levels to give us upside. Folks, if you're enjoying this, if you're getting some insight out of this, I need to know so I can keep doing this. Otherwise, I'll, I'll, I'll start focusing on some other factors in the market. Give me feedback. Support at marketgeeks.com. Leave your comment below. Talk to you soon. Have a safe week. Stay out of trouble.